as his shoulder came in, I let go and he took that step and I was, it was, it was right there. You're a freaking animal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready to go out to the range. And I'm checking out my cables and strings and I got an issue. As I went to go out and took a look at it, this is what I found. All the cables and string look good except for this bottom one. And this is an issue. This needs to be changed out as soon as possible. I don't know if you can see it there, but right there, it's just coming apart. There's broken strands in that. It's ready to let go. So first thing I had to do we decided what company I wanted to go with and after talking to a few people I know someone decided to go with 60x strings so I got online and I ordered for uh, strings for a Halon 32 and they were here in two days okay now that I got my strings and cables before you go tearing into things there's a second thing you got to do to get you back in the field as soon as possible, you gotta take some measurements. First thing you always wanna check would be your brace height, then your axle to axle, your knock height, and then your peep sight height from your knock. Now the Halon is a Halon 6, and after taking the measurements, it did come in at six inch brace height. Now your brace height is measured from the handle To the string and after measuring this it came in right at six inches so that tells me things aren't too out of whack because of that uh, string just becoming frayed and starting to break and then the second thing I wanted to measure is my knock height using a regular t-square I just set the square to the top of my rest and I took a measurement and it comes up about 3 8 of an inch from the bottom of the arrow. Then I measured from the inside where my knock hooks up. To my serving center and I also measured to the top of the peep. Now after writing all these things down on my little note sheet here I also wanted to measure my axle to axle. Measuring from here to here is your axle to axle length, and it came in at 32 and 3 16 So it's not right on 32, but it's in the area. So I don't want to make this video any longer than I have to. Uh, but I'm going to get at it and see how I make out changing these strings out and then we'll take our measurements and see how we did. Now before replacing these strings there's one thing I got to tell you and that is all the bows that you're going to restring and recable are not the same. So I recommend that you get on YouTube and watch on your particular bow how it's done. YouTube is your friend. And one thing also I gotta say is that when these strings do come they're all pre-stretched and they are all under pressure so that they get the right length and right twist in all your strings. And when you get them 
You gotta lay them all out and see what you have. In every set, you're gonna have your main string. and your cables. And if you have a harness system, like Matthews, you're also going to get a set of harness strings. And once they come to your house, and you open them up, you're going to notice that there is a paper clip holding the two loops together. Do not take this paper clip out until you're ready to install it on your bow because when you do, you will lose or gain twists. So the first thing you do is take your old string off, put your new, take your paper clip off without twisting or untwisting, and then install on your bow. Okay, I've changed out all the strings and cables now, and I've installed a peep and D loop to proper locations. Now I want to go back and see how close my actual specifications were to what they were before and what they are now. Try to zoom in on this cam a little bit. The uh, axle to axle on this bow is 32. And I had 32 and 3 16 So right now, after cabling it, I've got about 32 and 1 16th. So 32 and 1 16th with new strings that haven't settled in yet. They weren't going to stretch, but they will settle, they will tighten up on themselves, and they can change that a little bit. So now I want to go to my brace height. And being I have the tape measure turned sideways, it's showing a little longer than six, but when I turn it flat to the handle, it's six right on. So that being all said, we're ready to go, except for one thing, I have an issue right here with my drop away rest. The cord is now too short to get in between the cable because the serving on the new strings is longer. So. The company that sends these quad rests actually send you a little block. And this block is supposed to attach to the string and then you attach the, the uh, actually attach to the cable and it attaches to the string for the rest. And what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put this little thing on there. and. Uh, I'm going to try to time it like that, then I'll tie off on the string so that the block can't move upwards under pressure. Okay, now I've attached the timing block to the drop away arrow rest. I don't really particularly care for this setup, but we're going to work with it for right now. And I went back and checked my cam timing and I had to adjust it because on the Matthews bows, it's really neat. There's a hole right in the middle of one of the cams, right where they intersect the cables. That cable's got to be center in that hole for your cam timing to be correct. So that side's good. And that side appears to be good. I'll put it on a scale out there. I want to see if I've picked up any more poundage. Uh, being that the axle to axle length is now an eighth of an inch closer or the closer to spec, I imagine I picked up a few pounds. I had it set at 60 pounds. Let's go out and put it on the scale and see what happens. 
anytime you put shorter cables on or put twist in your cables, it puts more stress on the limbs, which increases your poundage. I'm going to see how much I've actually picked up here. I believe it's probably going to be a couple anyway. That says 63.3. And I'm not real impressed with the scale because it gives me different readings. So I'm going to take three of these for an average. Sixty three point two, sixty two point two. I'm going to have to go with like sixty three pounds. So I picked up three pounds. I can back it off using the limb bolts, but I think I might just leave it where it's at right now. Okay, now everything's been done. You want to see what kind of aero flight they're getting. You don't have to run down to your local archery shop or whatever. You can make one yourself. All I did was cut a square, a box, and a piece of printer paper. As long as you have a box, printer paper, a little bit of tape, and a bag to stop your arrow, you can do this right at home in your own basement. Yeah, so you've got to make sure that you put the box, the paper, far enough away that your arrow passes completely through and doesn't hit it out. I usually start off about three paces. Three yards or less, say 10 feet. Boom. Never had to change a thing. Everything worked out just the way we wanted it to. But after shooting that hole, I really don't think I need any more adjustments. That's about as perfect you can get.